So a while back, I did a post on New Jersey and um, an issue they have been having with lead in their water. Um, I really went deep on um, water filters and the difference between them. I encourage you to please check it out. Link will be um, in the description. I think about that post as I saw this new story. I told you before, a cancer-causing chemical has been found near homes in the Fifth Ward, and residents are saying it is killing them. Today, Fox 26's Chelsea Edwards joined the City of Houston Health Department to speak to them about the sickness they say is spreading through their neighborhoods. For residents here in Fifth Ward, cancer has created a steady stream of deaths of friends, neighbors, and family members. Now they hope the health department can connect them to the cause. Everybody around here dies with cancer. Everybody. The Texas State Department of Health Services recently found higher than normal rates of cancers in this area near a former creosote facility that treated wood. It was owned by Southern Pacific Railroad. Hello. So far, 110 homes have been found to be sitting on contaminated groundwater. This uh, particular kind of survey that we're doing, really trying to get information um, to understand better their environmental health and the cancer cluster that's been found here is um, definitely unusual for Houston. Volunteers are now going door to door asking how long they've lived here, if they've been diagnosed with cancer, and what kind. Lung and throat cancers have previously been linked to creosote. I don't think uh, Southern Pacific was forthcoming at that time in minority neighborhoods. Uh, there is probably um, less of a sense that you can fight up against a big company. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee says the investigation could lead to a class action lawsuit, while residents hope to live long enough to see the results. While residents hope to live long enough to see the results. Oh, I think it's bad. It's bad, but no, nobody can help us but him. That's all. That's all. The State Department says it will have these initial surveys done within the next two weeks. Then they'll be sent on to the state to determine if there is a connection between the contamination and the cancer cluster. Reporting from Fifth Ward, Chelsea Edwards, Fox 26 News. They are not only killing us with water in Flint, which still to this day doesn't have clean water. You know? Not only have they not fixed the water in Flint, but there are new areas popping up with issues with the drinking water. I just, I want you to take a look at this brother, Dr. Tyrone, break down just some of the things that could be in your water and how it, it can affect you from generation to generation. So I'm going to talk to you today about some work that I've been doing. I call it From Silent Spring to Silent Night, A Tale of Toads and Men. I work on a compound called atrazine. It's a so-called S-chlorotriazine. It's an herbicide or weed killer that's been used in monocot crops, mostly corn in this country, and it's been used since 1958, so it's been around longer than most of us. We use 80 million pounds annually in the United States, and it's used in more than 80 countries. So it's a global issue, but it's now outlawed in Europe, the country where the company calls home, or the continent that the company calls home. I started working on atrazine because the company asked me to look at what atrazine does in frogs. I started working in this African clawed frog, and what I showed was that atrazine causes a hormone imbalance. Whereas normally in males you should make testosterone from your testis, what atrazine does is it turns on an enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen, which in males causes you to be demasculinized, but also subsequently feminized. Here's some examples of what happens. This is a male African clawed frog that's been dissected that after exposure to atrazine, in addition to testis, has ovaries, large testis, and more ovaries. So it's a true hermaphrodite, which is not normal. <laughs> Even in frogs, not normal. In some cases, you don't get hermaphrodites, but you get males with testis with all that, see that stuff in the back, I call it junk in the trunk. You actually get eggs bursting out of these males' testicles. So guys, ponder that for a little while <laughs> as I talk. To give you some idea how big the problem is, this chemical, which is the number one selling pesticide in the world, we use the recommendation, recommended applications are 2.9 to 29 million parts per billion. 
That's 290 million times what we use in my laboratory that's applied to crops to agricultural fields. Agriculture runoff can range, as shown, as shown here, from here to here. Temporary pools, levels in permanent water, and even levels in rainwater are above the dose that we use, 0.1 parts per billion, to produce these hermaphroditic frogs. As a result, all of these bodies of water are at risk for producing these types of frogs in the wild, and we've identified this problem in the wild. In fact, even in rainwater, there's enough atrazine to make hermaphroditic, chemically castrated frogs. A half million pounds of atrazine come down in the rainwater in the United States every year, and it can travel for over 600 miles. What's worse is the drinking water standard set by the United States Environmental Protection Agency is 30 times higher than we use to make these hermaphroditic frogs in the laboratory. So that means that your drinking water can have as much as 30 times higher, on average, than levels that we know to be biologically damaging. So what are the effects on humans, you might be wondering? A colleague of mine, Shauna Swan, showed that it's in your urine. So these are men in Columbia, Missouri. And red now, there's significantly higher atrazine in the urine of men who have low sperm count and who have trouble getting their wives pregnant. So a similar effect that we see in our frogs at a similar level. 0.1 parts per billion in your urine is associated with low sperm count in men. That's the same dose that it takes to chemically castrate and feminize our frogs. What's more is if you look at studies done in California, here are men that work in the fields with atrazine, and here are levels in the men that apply atrazine to the fields in California. These men urinate levels of atrazine at 24,000 times the levels that we use in the laboratory. In other words, one of these guys could pee in a bucket, and we could use the atrazine in their urine to chemically castrate 24,000 buckets of 30 tadpoles each. Nobody knows nothing about the reproductive health or health of these men because they're primarily Mexican, Mexican-American, and in addition to chemicals like atrazine, they're exposed to things like chlorpicrin, which was originally developed as a nerve gas, and in many cases, they have life expectancies of 50. What's more is the sort of environmental justice, environmental racism issue does not only affect the end user, but also affects the producers. This is from the company that makes atrazine. They have a pipe that leads right into the Mississippi River. Shit water trying to kill us. We can't even get no clean water in here. Can't, can't even get no clean water. The Mississippi Department of Corrections is moving inmates up the road to Tallahatchie County. The state contracted with Core Civic, which has a private prison in Tutwiler. That's about 10 minutes away from the state penitentiary. More than 375 parchment inmates are moving right now to that private prison, and they'll be there for about 90 days. State prison leaders said Unit 29, where the inmates were initially housed, has a failing infrastructure. As much as 1.2 million pounds of atrazine flow in the Gulf of Mexico every year, and much of the community, much of the river looks like this, in a community that's 80% African American. I mention that it's 80% African-American because if you look at the top 13 cancers that we're likely to experience here in the United States, African-Americans are more likely to get 11 out of the 13. If you look at the mortality rates for all of the 13 cancers, African-Americans are more likely to die, and I can show you similar data for uh, Mexican-Americans, Hispanic-Americans, are more likely to die from every one of these cancers. The li likelihood of getting the cancers and dying from the cancers may very well have a biological basis, but we can't separate that from the fact that African-American and Hispanic-Americans are more likely to live in and more likely to work in areas that expose us to these types of chemical hazards. In addition to prostate and mammary cancer, which rats get when they're exposed to atrazine, and we use rats as a model for us, there's also data showing that atrazine causes immune failure in rats, that it causes neural damage, that induces abortion because of the hormone imbalances, that if those rats that don't abort, the exposed pups get prostate disease when they're born, or they have impaired mammary development, which looks like this. And as a result, when these rats grow up, they can't properly provide milk for their offspring. So the animal that you're looking at at the bottom there is affected by atrazine that his grandmother was exposed to. When I think about my little girl and the fact that we've already been exposed, that our children will be exposed, and probably our grandchildren, and when I think about those rat data, this means that your grandchildren will likely be affected by atrazine and other chemicals that we're applying today. As a result of that and comments like this from the manufacturer, that they assume no obligation to update forward-looking statements to reflect actual results, and the fact that the EPA gives us statements like this, the ultimate decision is much bigger than science. It weighs in public opinion. I've taken a stand. You can go to my website and write directly to people like Keith Ellison, who's written a bill to ban atrazine. You can, through Facebook, join Global Citizens Against Atrazine and become active that way. And there are multiple places where you can sign petitions to help ban atrazine, such as the Save the Frogs campaign. As a scientist and now someone who's been accused as an activist, I want to point out that a very smart man once said, those who have the privilege to know have the duty to act. This man said this. And now that you know that this stuff in our water will affect your son or daughter, there's something that you can do. Guys, I check between my legs and make sure I don't have eggs. And write your congressman before atrazine gets you too. So I'm just going to read excerpts from this article. 
Six-year-old had gone from hyperactive one school year to what teachers described as hysterical the next. Jalen would cycle through two schools, receive 30 suspensions, and rack up 70 unexcused absences. The contamination of this long-struggling city's water exposed nearly 30,000 schoolchildren to a neurotoxin known to have detrimental effects on children's developing brains and nervous systems. Requests for special education or behavioral interventions began rising four years ago. What the research says is that as they get older and the cognitive demands get harder, we will start to see the demands get higher and the resources aren't going to be there. We have a school district where all that's left are damaged kids who are being exposed to other damaged kids and it's causing more damage. Bethany, who has taught in Flint for 25 years, works two jobs to keep teaching because she said she cannot abandon children whose discolored, rash-covered skin and chunks of exposed scalp haunt her. In the early days of the crisis, she spent class time addressing questions from her students about whether they would die from the water like their class lizard. We can help ourselves. I invested in a filter because just because I live in an area where right now my water, they say, isn't poisoned. What's to say they won't slip it in in a few months and I don't know anything about it? So I'm now cooking with, I buy my drinking water, but everything that I cook with and use in the house and stuff like that is, is filtered water. I, I, it's bad, but no, nobody can help but but help. We have to start taking our own safety in our own hands. We have lived under a system that has been trying to kill us from within for the longest time. We have to start protecting ourselves. And we can start with something as small as the water that we drink and the water that we cook with. So one of these little guys attaches to this little guy. This little guy was screwed into the faucet from the, uh, the people we bought it from. So this is the thing that they provide a kit and screw it into the faucet. So, um, so this goes on here, a little thing like that. Just gotta make sure it's on right, especially if you're doing it overnight. Uh, wanna make sure it's on good. And then you turn the thing on. There goes. And then this hose here was purchased separately because it's very long. So uh, you may or may not be able to get that with the actual kit. Because uh, it kind of came with a shorter hose, but maybe you'll ask for a longer hose, the intake hose if you ask for it. We just didn't know to ask for it. But this is actually a piece of, what was it, ice machine hose you got? Ice maker? It's ice machine. It's, yeah. it's, it's what is it? On eBay, some ice, ice maker hose we got, right? Yeah. What happened was, this here, this here, and this here, the smaller cylinders, plus this larger one on the bottom, uh, came with the original kit. I just did a small cylinder in this place. Now we had to change that around because uh, we're in an older building with a lot of rusty pipes and things like that and it just clogs the filter in an instant. So, uh, so what we ended up doing was replacing the first canister that was actually in the original kit. Because it came with three of these and then this one here. Yeah, so it just wasn't, uh, wasn't powerful enough to handle these New York City pipes. So let me take you through the new system that we have here that, uh, and then we'll show you how it all underneath and the more info will show you where we got everything. So this hose here, the intake hose, goes into this big uh, sort of a pre-filter. Sediment filter. Yeah, it, 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 the goal of this is to basically take out iron and things, junk from the pipes that, that basically will clog up a filter in no time before it gets to your fancy filter because this filter is much cheaper to replace than like this one. So it goes in through here first and then you see the pipe goes around here up into a what do we call this filter? This is a pre Another pre-filter. Right? The, the other one's a set of, the first piece is a sediment, sediment filter. filter. Yeah, and this is That's a pre-filter which starts removing chemicals. Yeah, so wow. some chemicals come out here, like some chlorine and things. Yes, like that. And that's probably what your breeder filter might you know, serve as that pipe. Now after this, it goes into this thing, and this is the reverse osmosis filter down here, the bigger one. Um, and that is the one that takes the fluoride out. The only way to get fluoride out of your water is to reverse osmosis. There's no other way you can boil it. Just, and so this filter here takes that out, and so when, by the time you get over here, the fluoride is gone. This is when your measurement is, is probably basically down to zero. Um, and then the junk goes out to the yellow pipe. Including the fluoride goes out to the yellow pipe. Right, so this is your junk pipe here. This goes out into the, the outlet. And from this pipe over here, the water then goes over to the last filter, which is sort of a finishing filter, like a carbon filter type thing. That finishes and cleans out whatever is left over. Makes it taste good. Yeah. And then up here, and then we just attach this little fancy thing so this thing doesn't jump all over the place. This is just a home rig right here. You can use little pans uh, from your vegetables. To, you know, pans around the spare. That's what this is. Um, and then you just uh, hook that up in the way it's convenient for your bathtub if you have to do it in the bathtub. And then into the, into the jug. Um, now this is just a five gallon EPA free jug. One of those. 